technique that artists use to build up luminous layers of color. It's a method whereby you apply layers of transparent, semi-transparent, and even opaque paint mixed with a medium such as our acrylic glazing liquid, and you apply these layers one on top of the other to really build up a depth and colors that you can create by physically mixing your colors wet and wet. What I've got here is some acrylic glazing liquid, and I like to use this as my medium for glazing because it dries relatively quickly. It's going to give me just enough working time if I need to maybe lift out a glaze or rub it back, but it's going to dry fast enough that I can quickly apply layer on top of layer on top of layer of my Atelier Interactive Painting and know that they're not going to reopen, that it's not going to re-wet. So, what type of colors can I use? Well, as I mentioned, it's good to use your transparent colors. Transparent colors are going to make the best glazes because the pigments, by their very nature, are transparent. And you'll know your paints are transparent because it's represented by an open circle. Semi-transparent colors, such as this cerulean blue, also can work very well. It's going to be noted by a circle that's half and half. You can also make a glaze with opaque colors. That's going to be the filled in circle. And in a situation like that, instead of getting a transparent layer of color, you're going to get a more frosty or foggy type of color. So, how do I make a glaze? Well, the standard ratio is to use about 80 to 90% medium to about 10%, 20% or so of paint. It's definitely going to be more medium than paint. So what I'm going to do now is actually create a glaze. I already have some done here with my Brilliant Magenta and my Cerulean Blue Hue, uh, but this time I'm going to make one of my Red Gold, and that's my transparent color. I'm going to apply these glazes on top of my uh, surface here, which is just some canvas, which I put on a layer of Arillamide Yellow Light, and I reinforced that layer with a little bit of the Fast Medium Fixer. Now, for my glazing, I'm using my acrylic glazing liquid, and I'm just kind of putting some off to the side. And you can see I used a lot of medium because you are going to use more medium than glaze, or more medium than paint, I should say. There we go, add some paint. Now I want to mix this up, and I'm going to use just a, a painting knife, palette knife for that. You can see already that beautiful rich orange color that what I had in its mask tone, how it was turning into a beautifully warm, kind of yellowy gold, uh, a red gold I should say, color. It's very different when it's going to be used as a glaze as opposed to its mask tone. And that just kind of shows you a little bit about, about color and about pigment and how you can use a paint like Atelier Interactive in so many different ways. You can use it for all of your fast drying techniques. You can use it for controlled drying techniques where you give yourself more open time just by using a water sprayer. You could use it for slow drying methods. But this method that we're using, glazing, is definitely a, a fast drying technique. It's one that artists use you know, all the time. Okay. So I've got my glaze here of red gold. One thing that I always like to do when making a glaze is I always like to test it right off to the side just so I can see how strong it is. Because sometimes these colors will look very, very strong, but when you apply them, they're really not. What I do here is that I'm using uh, some soft brushes. I don't want to use a bristle brush. And the standard way to do this is to either work out those lines or those ridges with your brush or to kind of rub back with a, a soft rag. All those old t-shirts that you get paint on work wonderfully well for uh, these painting rags. So you can see how I've already enhanced my color in a very subtle and a very nuanced way just by applying that single glaze. Now, if I were going to do this with my semi-transparent color, and that's my cerulean blue, again, I want to test it off to the side. You can see it's definitely a little bit stronger. 
I'm just going to apply this in the middle area here. I'll even work some down onto the other glaze that I have here. And as a semi-transparent color, my glaze is a little bit stronger. I'm definitely masking a little bit more of that Arillamide yellow light. And now I'm just going to kind of rub it back in. And you can see that in this section here, I have a beautiful green tone. And again, a color like this, you really wouldn't be able to mix. My colors are doing optical mixing as opposed to actual physical mixing. So now I'm going to apply my last glaze here, and that's my more opaque type of glaze using some brilliant magenta. Again, I test it off to the side. It looks a little strong, but we'll see how it is. Ah, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful color here. And you can see that it definitely is stronger than the cerulean blue, but still that glazing liquid added just enough transparency and translucency to this that I can use a color, even an opaque color like this, a strong, bright, brilliant color, like Brilliant Magenta, as my glaze. And now I'm just gonna rub that back a little bit. And rather than put that on top of this green, which will just kind of give me kind of a brownish color because they're complementary colors, I'll apply it down here where I've already put a little bit of my red gold, just so you can see the idea of how multiple glazes really build up that depth and that luminous quality. And again, now I'm starting to get some really rich orange tones. Different from when I just apply it singly, again, because I'm applying multiple glazes. And that's a wonderful, wonderful technique that I would encourage artists to explore with the Atelier Interactive Acrylics, along with our acrylic glazing liquid. To show you a practical way of working with glazes, I've got this painting here that I did a few years ago on paper of a Vermont countryside, and I like it. It has a lot of you know, wet and wet, it has a lot of overpainting, it's got some great texture in it, but when I was looking at it the other day, I thought, eh, it needed something, it needed a little bit more punch, a little bit more, more subtlety as well, and that is definitely a case for glazing. I made up some more glazes here, including quinacridone magenta, which is one of my favorite, favorite colors, as well as a stronger dark, a blue-black. And I'm going to show you how a painting, as opposed to just a color swatch, can actually be enhanced. So I'm starting at my sky. What I want to do is maybe make it a little bit more, a little bit redder, a little bit more. Uh, just a little bit you know, warmer kind of going with my mountain. So I'm gonna take my quinacridone magenta glaze and I'm just going to apply it with my soft brush. Again, this acrylic glazing liquid is wonderful. It makes the glaze flow really, really beautifully as well as just making this beautiful translucency there. You can kind of see how already I've got a little bit more color shift, a little bit more color depth. Now I'm going to take a darker color, this blue-black, which is one of our toning blacks, which is just gray on its own, and it's also just wonderful as a glaze. It's going to be a little bit strong, and you might be thinking, whoa, but that's okay, because I'm just applying it here, salt to the side, there we go. And I'm just going to work it in, make it a little bit more. You can see now my sky is be turning a little bit more violet down here. What I'm doing also is, is working horizontally. Typically when you glaze, you're going to want to do this horizontally just so your glazes don't run. Now, that's not too bad. And of course, if I wanted to, I could just take a rag and and rub it back a little bit. So I can just kind of rub it. Very, very nice. Now looking at that, if this is just a little bit too blue, I can go on top of this color with some more to make this area a little bit more purple too. And just keep building up that depth. Right now I'm working 
just back and forth, but you obviously do not need to do that you know, with glazes. You can just do it in, in parts or working with the way that your piece is going. Rub that out a little bit. Do some lifting of that glaze so I get a little bit of a, of a cloud form in here. That looks pretty good. You can see by my rag that I was able to, to lift out part of this glaze because it was still wet and workable. And now I'm gonna focus a little bit more down on my grass and my tree area. I like the way that this guy shaped up. Now I'm gonna focus a little bit more on my tree line here. So I'm using my red gold glaze, which is transparent. I'm just gonna put some on some of my, my trees here. So it, Looks like it's catching the light of that autumn foliage, maybe a little bit on the red. And, and then I'm just going to pull some of it back because I don't want it to be overpowering. And I like that effect. Just, I mean, just nice enough. And now I'll take a little bit of my Brilliant Magenta, which is my more opaque glaze, and kind of touch up some of these trees. My red trees get a little bit more punch, a little bit more depth. I can put some onto my darker areas here to build up that transparent, you know, dark quality. And that's always nice in shadows to have a lots of different glazes in your shadow areas. Again, areas where are a little too heavy, I can just kind of pull back and wipe off, make it nice and soft. So it's just leaving hints of color behind. Now for my grass area, I have a couple different choices here. I could use a glaze like my quinacridone magenta glaze and put it on top of the green area. And what this is gonna do is help tone this down because reds and greens are, are complements of each other. So it's gonna take it back just a little bit. And that's something to think about when you're working with glazes. You don't always have to enhance colors, but sometimes you might want to just knock the whole area back or maybe lighten the whole area up. And that's what a glaze can do. But I don't want it to look magenta, so I'm just going to wipe that back. And already it got a little bit, a little bit duller, toned it down a little bit, which is nice because that helps balance this more of a neutral green. Works really well with my brighter, more intense sky and the foliage in between. So that's just one example of how you can use glazes in, in a painting, but there are lots of ways that you can experiment to build up that luminous depth. And once again, I do encourage you to, to try it out. It's a technique that you'll love. Here are some other paintings that show the use of glazes. You'll notice that some of the paintings are done in a much tighter style, while some are a little bit looser and a little bit more abstract and they incorporate a variety of techniques and a variety of different ways of applying paint, from using a paintbrush to using a palette knife. For more information on Atelier Interactive, please visit our website, which is www.chromaonline.com.